And hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill. And man, oh man, we're in 2023. And this past week, weekend of sports has been wild. Um, the NBA is popping off. The NFL uh, just had a big scare. We'll get right into that in a minute. And the bowl games were some of the best that I've seen possibly ever. I don't know. In recent memory, at least. <clears throat> Um, but to start off the show has to be on a, a little bit of a somber note. If you're hiding under a rock, you probably haven't heard. Um, but Buffalo Bills and Cincinnati Bengals game on Monday night uh, was suspended due to um, the Buffalo Bills safety, DeMar Hamlin, uh, going into cardiac arrest. Um, they had to take an ambulance out to the field they, uh, where they resuscitated him with CPR. Um, even had to bring a defibrillator out, rushed him to the hospital. Uh, the latest news is that he is doing better, but it was one of the craziest scenes I think most of us have ever seen in an NFL field. And I don't know. It, it It's one of those moments that brings a lot of things into perspective where even though that game had playoff implications, um, I mean, even fantasy football, if you're into that, championships for fantasy football where sometimes a lot of money is involved, random things like that, and those were all put to the wayside. And, you know, people just were thinking about this young man. I mean, he's 24 years old, so it's kind of crazy to think that that can happen. We don't see it in football all too often, even though it's a dangerous sport. It's just wild. Um, Malik, what was your immediate reaction to seeing that? whole thing transpire so <clears throat> i didn't see when it happened i i can't remember what i turned it I'm, it was probably a college basketball game or something but i turned it away for about five minutes and i went to check my the score on my phone the espn app to see if anybody had scored and it said the game was delayed so i was confused i didn't know if it was weather or i didn't know what was happening so i turned it back and as soon as i turned it back there's just like a like a zoomed out view of the field with ambulance trucks on the field. Mm -hmm. And I, there's like no words for like 10 seconds. And I'm just confused. Like what, what, what happened? And then I believe it was Lisa Salters that came in <coughs> and said, they've now been performing CPR for nine minutes mm -hmm. on DeMar Hamlin. And when she said that, I honestly, I, I was, I, it was, it was a mix of confusion and shock and just like, mm -hmm. I've never heard or seen something like that during any football game, yeah. NFL, college, high school. I've I've never seen something like that, and for it, for it to happen on a Monday night football game, huge, mm -hmm. big time matchup, Bills versus Bengals, first quarter game had barely gotten started. <coughs> it was it was it was crazy, and then immediately you see the reactions of the players on the field. Mm -hmm. You see guys crying. You see. Players from each team's hugging each other. Sean McDermott and um, Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor meet each other on the field to discuss what's happening. It was, yeah, it immediately turned from, wow, this is all happening during this big football game to this guy's, we, we didn't know what was happening in the moment. Right. Some people were thinking it could be cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. Some people didn't know if it was concussion-based. Right. It was just a, a scattering of opinions and mm -hmm. thoughts all over the place. And yet then it, it instantly became this it's this isn't about football anymore. This is about this young man's life. Yeah. And doing whatever they could do to figure out what was happening and save him. And they got a I can't remember how long it took, but they got him on the ambulance and they went out and then there yeah, there there was a long pause and they eventually decided to not play the game but yeah yeah it i it's still just crazy to think i i didn't know how to feel in the moment mm -hmm. uh <coughs> honestly 
I couldn't imagine how crazy that was for the all the analysts and people that were. Yeah, and I think they yeah. did a fairly good job for you know the situation that they were put into. Oh yeah, they they all did as well as they could addressing the situation. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is like I don't know about it, if if you're this way, but I I I know that there's a lot of guys that are kind of similar this way. When you see another man crying, it just hits you. Different. You you know something is wrong. Yeah, yeah. it just hits different. So, like, I can't remember who it was exactly, but uh, one of the defensive players, might have been Tredavious White, but I'm not I'm not 100% sure, um, was just, like, sobbing in, like, one of the linemen's arms. And it's just, like, that yeah. raw emotion. It, it was is... at that moment where I went on Twitter when every, all the players were crying. <laughs> That's when everybody started blowing up, like, what is happening? Mm-hmm. Like, this something horrible has happened. Yeah. And it's just another one of those things. The only thing that I can even ever um, – recall being similar for me in sports is I remember when I was very young um when Dale Earnhardt died um I was big into NASCAR when I was a kid just like everybody else Dale Earnhardt was like one of my favorite drivers me and my dad um and so like that was one of the scenarios that it's very similar to where like it looks like a normal thing like NASCAR cars crash all the time nowhere didn't look like a bad crash at all Dale Earnhardt ends up passing away from injuries. This looked like a routine football play, which I think was the crazy thing. Yeah, I I didn't see the replay of when he <laughs> dropped until like an yeah. hour or two afterwards. Yeah, I saw it shortly after because I I just they weren't gonna replay it, which I'm glad they didn't. Um, because sometimes I feel like, um, like the Tua injury, we saw that replayed multiple yeah, times, times, which is yeah. just I don't know. A lot of the times I'm begging for replays on. Uh, sports broadcast, like show me the replay. Injuries, not not so much. Yeah. Um. So I saw it on Twitter eventually, and it it's a it was a scary scene, but it looked like a routine play. So unfortunately, those were the first thoughts that came into my mind. But so far, positive news. Um, he was um sedated, um, and still is put on a ventilator. They reduced the oxygen supposedly to 50%. Now, a lot of these claims and things are not 100% true. Nobody fully knows because they can't uh, release a lot of that information. But supposedly, they brought down the oxygen, which is a good thing. It means that he doesn't need as much flowing into his lungs. And supposedly, they flipped him onto his chest, which is also a good thing because that relieves pressure. Um, And the latest update that they got from one of his family friends and a business partner or something or other um, on ESPN said that things are moving in the positive direction, which is a good thing. Um, the only other thing that I'll say besides, obviously, the the fans have been incredible during this, which is yeah. cool to see. Like you mentioned, the analysts, seems like all the players and coaches um, became unified. And if you guys have, if nobody's heard, he had a setup, GoFundMe for a toy drive that he was doing, wanted to raise money for kids. Yeah, had like it, it was only around like twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, when it, yeah. So before. he he wanted to raise like I don't remember what the total was, but he had twenty five hundred dollars raised. Somebody found that link, and immediately like that night it was over a million. Like later in the day it was three million, and now it's sitting at over five and a half million dollars in that drive, which is crazy. Um, supposedly he's also the number one selling, uh, NFL Jersey or sports Jersey at all right now in the last two days. And supposedly some Jersey companies are donating back to that same charity, which is, I think is really cool. Like when sports, you know, go outside of just the sport and become a unifying thing, I think is always really neat and interesting. Yeah. And (laughs) from everything I've heard, he's just a great like upstanding yeah really good young dude Mm -hmm. that yeah he there's several videos of him with his family at games yeah he's known for doing charity work outside of football he's from pittsburgh he went to pittsburgh right and i all worry from all code mike tomlin said he's known noir hamlin since he was like 12 because he grew up in the area Mm -hmm. and he said he he had nothing but positive things to say about him so and he was a six six round pick yeah i believe um and they just said, like, he just keeps working his way up and became a starter this year. So, or 
starter this year when I don't remember if it was when Micah Hyde got hurt. No, he's he started almost every game. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But he got an opportunity when somebody got hurt and then he's, you know, just taking it and run with it. So prayers out to him, thoughts, you know, all that stuff that you know you can only say so much, but you just hope that things keep moving in the positive direct positive direction. Um moving on to I don't know, is it more positives? Uh <laughs> College football playoff games. Um, it's something. <laughs> it was a wild weekend of of games, to be honest. Um, a lot of good ones, some not so good. But yeah, a lot of people are calling it the best <laughs> like college football semifinal day so far since it yeah, started. The college football playoff for sure was the best that I've ever seen. It. Yeah. Um, trying to get to the, the games that I just wanted to mention really quick. Just ball games in general? Yeah, I was just going to oh. really, really quickly go over the ones that we kind of talked about. Like, even even Oregon, North Carolina, that came down to, like... Yeah. It, it wasn't as many fireworks ex- as we expected, but it yeah. was still a good game. Still came down to the wire. Um, Drake May didn't have that game that we thought he might. I mean, Arkansas-Kansas went to triple overtime, which yeah. is wild. That game was insane. Kansas was down by three scores. Mm-hmm. Going into the third, they end up coming back and going to overtime. Almost won. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota beat Syracuse 28-20. to I mean, another close game. Florida State beat Oklahoma 35-32. to I get, That was a awesome game. Better than I ever expected. Yeah. yeah. Um, Washington beat Texas 27-20. to Like, all these games were basically one-score games. Maryland beating NC State 16-12. to Pitt beating UCLA 37-35. to Notre Dame forty five over South Carolina thirty eight. Ohio Ohio Wyoming thirty to twenty seven in overtime. I, wa- I watched the highlights of that game and it was <laughs> a great game. Mm-hmm. There were so many awesome bowl games. Yeah, it was yeah. it was wild. Tennessee beating Clemson was a, a surprise to me actually. Joe Milton got his day in the sun. He, yeah. he might have an argument for starting if he comes back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they looked good. Um, Alabama blew out Kansas State. That was yeah. One that I thought could happen, wasn't sure. Iowa beating Kentucky, twenty-one nothing is. It was just, it was a strange game. It was, um, but obviously, I mean, Kentucky, no Will Levis. It's, yeah. What are you gonna oh, do? There, there's one standout from that game, surprisingly, mm-hmm. that I think people need to take note of for the NFL draft in a year or two. Cooper DeJean, yeah, starting safety for Iowa. He reminds me of an even better. In coverage version of Harrison Smith, mm-hmm. like he he is so fast. Like he returned punts in the game too. Like he he's a good returner. He's super athletic. He's really good in coverage and he can hit. Yeah. Cooper DeJean will probably be like a top three round pick in a few years mm-hmm. or maybe next year. Yeah. Before we get into the playoff games too, I want to highlight the Monday games as well. Uh, Mississippi State had a crazy fourth quarter comeback to beat Illinois. They basically got all their points in the fourth quarter. Um, LSU destroyed Purdue. That wasn't that, that wasn't even that good. was like the worst game. Uh Penn State beating Utah kind of handily. Um part of it was Cam Rising getting earn, injured, but he wasn't playing the greatest before that. Yeah, Penn State, they honestly <laughs> came out and just looked like the better team from mm-hmm. like the jump. Sean Clifford did his thing of just, you know, little passing yeah. here. He and there. he got a he stopped and got a standing ovation coming out mm-hmm. from his last snap. So we assume his career is over. Yeah. We think. But you never know these days. Yeah. You never know. Um, And then my favorite game, honestly, Tulane and USC. That was a barn burner. I, I'm really happy for, first of all, first of all, Tulane, mm-hmm. because it's their best season in program history. Um, Just, it's, it was odd. Uh, Not only... That they won, but the way that they did it was crazy. Yeah. They got a late touchdown from their running back who had a monster day. Yeah, he's he's gonna be a pro. Uh Tajay Spears yeah. got had two hundred and five yards, four touchdowns, he had a late touchdown in the fourth quarter. Then on the next uh drive, they got a safety to bring it to thirty nine thirty or thirty nine forty five. And then with what, ten seconds or whatever, they threw a touchdown pass from their quarterback, which was wild, and then gave USC, like, 
terrible field position with 10 seconds, basically, um, to try to do something miraculous. And Tulane won this game with Caleb Williams throwing for 462 yards, five touchdowns, and only one pick. Yeah, classic Lincoln-Riley team, high-level Heisman <laughs> quarterback, zero defense. Yeah. Hopefully, one day he gets it fixed. Who knows? He's got to yeah. get some players in there. And it was also a, a bit of a coming-out party for Brendan Rice as well. Yeah, I, I expected him to be more a part of the team, of the passing game. He's had the talent coming from Colorado, but yeah, he he finally popped up. Yeah, he's been more of a. I mean, he still was in this game, but he's been more of just a big play guy, not a consistent guy throughout the season, I guess. Um, but yeah, that game. Yeah, that was I, fun to watch. I also, I think it's a win for the American <laughs> mm-hmm. because I don't I don't think Tulane is going to the Big Twelve. I'd have to look it up. I think it's just like Cincinnati, Houston. Yeah, like yeah, I don't think Tulane is going, so it's a big win for that conference mm-hmm. and for the future playoff, right? Because this shows, along with what's happening in the playoff currently, mm-hmm. that there can be some parity in the future. Yeah, because there are teams that pop up like this, like Tulane, with an explosive offense and a gritty defense mm-hmm. that can take down a team that's ranked higher with a higher pedigree, right? But just isn't fully ready for the spotlight yet. Mm-hmm. And these types of games can happen. Yeah, no, I agree. I I think this bodes well for the expansion of the college football playoff. Yeah. Because at first we thought it would have been like, you know, they would have done the slow jump to eight games, but they went right to 12. I don't know. Now I'm hoping that it's a good thing, and it seems like it. <clears throat> All right, let's get into it. We just we ripped the Band-Aid off. College football playoffs. TCU took down Michigan. 51-45, to 45, at one point, looked like TCU was going to run away with it. But Michigan, yeah. they did have a good second half. And I, I don't like to say that they should have won because, you know, you can always do the shoulda, woulda, couldas. But Michigan felt like the better team, but they just made too many state mistakes, got a little bit unlucky, and they just they just fell apart. Um, you know, when you go down, what were they down? 20, 20, was it 21, six? Yeah. Okay. Um, like you put yourself in a hole and that's the thing we talked about early on in the season is like Michigan struggles when they're behind because of the way that their offense flows through mostly their running game. Um, we saw that a little bit, but they did, like I said, in the second half, they did step up and they made some pretty big plays and they had it. They had a chance. Um, they had a final drive where there there was a chance to do something. There were some issues in that final drive as well, but you know it, it was a super exciting game either way. Um, but I'll quit talking. I'll let you take the reins and let us know what you saw. Yeah, it was a it was a mix of bad luck, bad execution, and bad coaching. To me, it looked like they. TCU was prepared for what Michigan was going to do. And Michigan was not prepared for what TCU was going to do. Mm-hmm. It seems like that whole month of getting prepared, I don't know what they were doing. Yeah. Because out that, that first drive for Michigan, Donovan Edwards hits that big 55-yard rush. Mm-hmm. They get to the goal line. They get stubborn like they have at times and have those red zone problems. Mm-hmm. You get to fourth and goal. And instead of relying on what you do all season, you pull out a Philly special. Still doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Didn't make sense in the moment. TCU was ready for it. And from that point on, the rest of the first quarter, it seemed like everything that could go wrong did. Yeah. You've got the J.J. McCarthy pick six Mm -hmm. that helped TCU get their first points. Mm Mm-hmm. You got the Roman Wilson touchdown that's overturned. So a lot of people think it shouldn't have been overturned, but it it, it is what it is. Yep. And then immediately you give a fullback dive to Kalel Mullings, and he fumbles it at the goal line, and TCU recovers it. Mm-hmm. Two goal line chances. Trying to get two too turnovers. Cute. Trying to get too cute. Yeah. Too early on, and again, I like I'm not the one to say this often because. I'm the guy that likes when teams take chances in big games. But it's that's when, what, it's when you take them. That's what got them the win against Ohio State. Yes. They did it the right timing. 
this, you're on the one yard line. Your bread and butter is to run the ball. You have the best offensive line. Like, why are we trying to do different things in this scenario? Maybe if you were down early and that's what you had to do to try to, you know, come back. But yeah, it, it's just weird. Yeah, I I think part of it might have been Blake Corn, but also you have Donovan Edwards. Mm-hmm. He's strong as a, as well as elusive. You didn't have to give it to Kalel Mullings. Right. The O lines and D lines played their worst game. They looked confused for most of the. They played a little better in the second half, but the O line was confused all first half. TCU's three three five and switching things up just had them mixed up all over the place. <laughs> yeah, they were getting blown off the ball a lot. Mm-hmm. Which showed how talented TCU is overall, and honestly, I I'm a, I was happy with how they fought so hard in the second half, mm-hmm. but it was just too much to come back from. Yeah, I, I feel like the big one was the second pick six. Was the was that second pick six before? I th- I th- which how did it go? I think he threw that pick six. They came back and scored. Yep. And then TCU got the ball back, and that's when Quentin Johnson hit that big 70-yard touchdown. Um, I think that's how it happened. No, that was a little later. So what happened was – Because uh, after the pick six – oh, he threw the pick six. J.J. McCarthy scored the rushing touchdown. Yes. And then they – yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, here we'll just kind of run through it. Third – halftime comes back. Michigan gets another field goal. Then – they get the touchdown pass from Ronnie Bell to Ronnie Bell. Yeah. So Michigan's only down 16 to 21. Then, then TCU there's... comes back. They score off the rushing touchdown, 28-16. Yeah. And then there's next the pick drive, six. pick six. 35-16. Yes. Yeah. And then that's when um JJ gets the 20 yard rush. Michigan's now 22-34. Then Max Duggan gets a rushing touchdown, 41-22. And so that's where it was kind of going back and forth for a while. Yeah, where it was, it was like, eventually, what well, it was forty one thirty, what was it? It was like forty one thirty eight. Yeah. So I think that's what it end was. End of the third quarter, Khalil Mullings got the short rushing touchdown, thirty to forty one. Then they got the pass uh, to Roman Wilson, which was thirty eight forty one. And then they got the two point. Then it was yeah. the big play from Quentin Johnson that kind of like, kind of shut the, the game down. But yeah, even. That second pick six was huge, but like you just mentioned, Michigan gets a field goal. TCU just walks down the field easily and scores. Mm-hmm. Michigan scores. TCU easily scores. Yeah. Then there's the pick six. Mm-hmm. Like a- every time they gained a little momentum, they would mess it up all again, whether it was defense or offense. Yeah. And as hard as they fought in the second half, it was just too much. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, it. If they stop Quentin Johnston, if um, – I forget the corner's name. If he makes the tackle on Quentin Johnston, DJ Turner, mm-hmm. if they get that stop, there's a chance they could take the lead. Yeah. But he misses the tackle, takes a bad angle. There were a lot of bad angles. There were a lot of bad defensive calls. It was just all around bad execution and coaching, and yeah, they didn't look prepared. I mean, they gave up – For what was coming. Uh, Emery uh, – let me look. DeMarcado. DeMarcado. Yeah. yeah. He had 150 yards. On 17 carries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. Michigan hasn't given it up anything like that all season. Yeah. And, like, I know that Quinton Johnston is, you know, he's going to be a top pick for wide receiver. But we just saw it against Ohio State, I mean, Marvin Harrison kind of got his, but then they were able to kind of slow him down eventually. Yeah. Max Duggan didn't even have a great game. Yeah. He he hit He mostly four, just threw to Quinton Johnston. He hit three or four key throws on target mm-hmm. that ended up going on becoming big plays. Yeah. Even with the pick sixes, JJ McCarthy pretty much had a better game, mm-hmm. but those key mistakes, those key mistakes, the easy touchdown for TCU and the turnovers in the first quarter, it was too much. Yeah. It was too much to overcome. And TCU took advantage of every opportunity. Right. They deserved the win. Mm-hmm. They were five and seven last year. Yeah. They have a new coach in Sonny Dykes. They weren't predicted to finish top three in conference. Mm-hmm. They're twelve and one going to the national championship. Yeah, and they deserve the win mm-hmm. with how Michigan played. And it's another big game disappointment for Michigan. Yeah, and it is so strange looking at it that way. 
because it's it's two different views. The Michigan point of view is this is the best two season stretch I've ever seen from Michigan football. Mm-hmm. They just won back to back Big Ten titles and beat Ohio State back to back for the first time in my life. I've seen yeah. that I've seen. That's an incredible stretch of Michigan football. Mm-hmm. The outside view is, why do you Michigan fans care so much about beating your rival? Yeah. Why don't you care more about winning national titles? Mm-hmm. And that's just a whole Michigan football culture thing over the history of the program yeah. that we won't go super deep into right now. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm just, I'll just sum it up into, I've said this before on this podcast, going from really good to elite champion is the hardest thing to do in college football. Mm -hmm. Alabama did it. Clemson figured it out. And Georgia figured it out last year. In between, there's a few, like, one and duns. Mm -hmm. But Alabama, Clemson, and Georgia are, like, the top dogs of the past 10 years. Ohio State won won a national championship in the past 10 years. Yeah. They have been the four schools that have figured out being elite. There's 120 something else schools. <laughs> mm-hmm. Those four figured it out. And Michigan, whether Michigan fans want to hear it or not, they're a really good program in this day and age of modern college football. Mm-hmm. They are not an elite college football program. Right. Yeah. And, and they- figuring out how to get there is the hardest part. Mm-hmm. And they can't figure out how to do it. They figured out how to take out the elite Ohio State, their rival, the past two years, mm-hmm. which is a big step. And they've gotten to the playoff two years in a row, which is a big step. Yeah. But there's another step, and that's getting to the mountaintop. Yeah. It's it's almost like having to face a non-Big Ten team is just, I don't know, it's just throwing them off or whatever. They 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 never look fully prepared yeah. Yeah, for, what, for, what it, for what else there is mm-hmm. in college football. Yeah. And not that, like, Obviously, TCU's defense isn't, like, elite, but they're also not bad. And that's something that I feel like the Big 12 is is slowly turning the narrative on just, just a little bit. They they were the most balanced conference in college football this season. Yeah, like, they're, they, they've they always been known for big scoring, no defense, and they're starting to get some defense. Yeah, Iowa State can play defense. TCU mm-hmm. has had some good defenses there. There are some of those teams. I yeah. agree. So – it, it, you can't – I don't know. I don't know if they took the team lightly, but you just – I don't know. You got to game plan differently when you're not playing a Big Ten team. The Big Ten, they have a set play style that they're used to, and I don't know. That, that's just an outside view. Yeah. Right at the end of the day, I'm, even with those pick sixes, I'm happy where J.J. McCarthy has come throughout the season. In that second half, he showed <clears throat> all of his talent mm-hmm. and the ability to – he showed something that he hasn't had to do outside yeah. of like the Indiana game in, earlier in the year. Mm-hmm. He brought the team back even with making mistakes and yeah. brought them within one score of winning the game. Mm-hmm. My only – I was starting to believe in J.J. and now like kind of in limbo. I still think he's good, but at the same time I'm kind of like – There's still a lot of stuff he has to answer. Yeah. I, I agree. Because obviously like, you know, you lose a lead early, early pick six – you don't want to see that out of your quarterback. Then in the second half, throwing another pick six that kind of puts you out of the game at the moment. Um, and maybe that was like why he was able to make a comeback because once you get down whatever they were, what was it, 28 to 16, then you're kind of like, well, now I've already made two big mistakes. At this point, it doesn't matter. So then he can get comfortable. Now just go out and let loose. Right. And so then that's how he made the comeback. So you can see the potential, but I'm just – I don't know. He, he showed – he did everything to lose them the game and everything to win it in the comeback. Yeah. I think it he just, did both. It, it just kind of stinks as just as I was getting confidence for him, it kind of took a, a small step back. Yeah. It's clear that the talent is still there and he has the ability, but yeah, he, he has steps to take. Yeah. So good game. Disappointing loss. Yeah. From uh, Michigan Wolverines. And if people aren't cheering for TCU to win the national championship, what are you doing with your life? Um, then the second game happened, which was also wild. Georgia beat Ohio State 42-41, to 41, literally at the stroke of midnight. Yeah. 
Um, if you were watching the ball drop like we were, the game winning. Yeah, the ball drop and the kick basically happened at the same time. Yeah. Um, Ohio State missed a, was it 52? I think it was 52. 52 yard field goal that would have won the game. And it missed it almost embarrassingly. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And I think the crazy thing was the way that Georgia came back in this game. They, they Ohio State looked like they had complete control multiple times. Yeah. I, I thought it was similar to TCU and Michigan where I thought Ohio State was just going to run away with it. And then slowly and surely, Georgia just they battled back. They even tied it. Um, they even took a lead for a short bit just before halftime. And then C.J. Stroud hit another touchdown. So they Ohio State led 28-24 to 24, um, at halftime. And then again in the second half, Ohio State exploded again. They went up 38-24 to 24 in the third quarter. And then, I don't know, Georgia just never gave up. And uh, the, the big one for this game was the Arian Smith, also 76-yard pass, similar to Quentin Johnston. Uh, this this one was wide open though. He was yeah. open by like twenty something yeah, yards. Yeah. But just a misplay by the Ohio State defense. Yeah. And, and then he Stetson Bennett dropped a dime in the back of the end zone to AD Mitchell. Yeah, that to was, take the lead. That was a beautiful pass. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Stetson Bennett kind of outdueled CJ Stroud in a in a sense, sort of. Listen, he he's a gamer. Yeah. And I I'll, I'll keep it kind of short because we we gotta keep yeah. it moving, but. C.J. Stroud has earned every bit of respect for me that I'd, he had lost like throughout the season. Mm-hmm. He played his best game. Yeah, He brought his A game. He moved around more than he had throughout the season. Yeah, he looked rarely mobile. He, he made a great run to get them into field goal range. His passes were on point. I mean, it, it was, for the most of the game, it was another example of him. When he has a clean pocket, mm-hmm. he's a technician. Yeah, he he can pick a defense apart when he has a clean pocket, but he showed the ability to move. He showed his athleticism, and he's going to be in the conversation for the number one pick mm-hmm. because that game showed you everything you needed to see. And I'm sure teams don't want to miss the make the uh, mistake they made not doing Justin Fields and going Zach Wilson yeah. full hype train that year. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it'll be between him and Bryce Young again because Bryce Young went crazy against Kansas State too. They're the clear yeah. one and two. I'll just mention it real quick because we don't we didn't get to talk about it. Bryce Young, fifteen passes, five touchdowns, or yeah. fifteen completions. He started like one of five and then barely missed from that point on. It's yeah. Yeah. so those two are easily top quarterbacks. But yeah, Georgia, Georgia, they they showed the pedigree of a champion mm-hmm. by just sticking with it. I think they finished on like an eighteen to three run yeah. in the second half. And they just did what had they did what they needed to do. Yeah, and it, it does end up being like what we said with the problem with Ohio State in this game was going to be their running game. You know, it, besides injuries, guys committing to the draft, things like that, they were down to what their was it their fourth running back? Who uh, Ohio State? Yeah, yeah. I think did Maya Williams play? I don't I can't remember. remember. I don't remember either. But I know that like their leading rusher was DJ Hayden, which is a freshman. Yeah. So oh, Mayan yeah. Williams did. He had three carries. Yeah. But yeah, they, they played DJ Hayden, who was a true freshman. Yeah, so that was going to be their downfall, and it kind of kind of turned into it. Um, so now we got Georgia, TCU. I actually think it's it could be an exciting game now after watching both these games. Georgia's defense gave up a lot to Ohio State, even though, you know, Ohio State's a really good um, offense. But I think TCU has some ways that they can win the game. Um, I think if Max Duggan just – cleans it up a little bit and is on a mission. I I want TCU to win, obviously. Um, but I think that would be really cool to see. And I, I do think they have a chance. But Georgia's going to be tough. I think TCU stays in it for a good chunk of the game. Just runs out of gas. And, yeah, I think eventually Georgia is, is – I think they're too much eventually. Okay. I think C.J. Stroud and that Ohio State offense was the offense that could take out Georgia. Mm-hmm. And they almost did. I think TCU is, is ex- very explosive also, but I don't think they can hit as often and as and keep punching over and over again like Ohio State. Yeah. I think Georgia 
I think their defense settles in more than they did against Ohio State. Mm-hmm. I think Stetson Bennett really shows why he's one of the best leaders in the country and why he's been the starting quarterback of the championship teams for the past two years. Mm-hmm. And I'll give it a score of 38-28, Georgia. Okay. I don't think I have a score. Um, maybe 42. There, okay. there's It's been high scoring so yeah. much. I, I I'll, it, I'll go like 42, maybe 45. Yeah, I do think it will be crazy. another high scoring game. All right. Almost done with college football, which is, is wild. One more weekend. Yeah. Um, okay, we haven't talked about the NBA in a while. And since we haven't talked about them. Everybody's going crazy. Yeah, they, they've they just exploded. Um, Everybody's going nuts. Crazy scoring everywhere. Teams beating, bad teams beating good teams all over the place. Um, so we have to start with the one that we didn't get to last week. Luka Doncic did something nobody's ever done before. He put 60 points up, had 21 rebounds. And 10 assists on very efficient shooting. Yeah. Um, he only for, took like three threes. Yeah. For which, for him, is usually something he's a little less efficient most of the time. Um, but that was kind of the start. Now, he's been averaging, like, I mean, he put up 50. Um, when was that? Two days before Christmas. And then. A couple days later was when he put up the 60. He had another 50 point, 51 point game recently. And then what was it last night? Two nights ago, he had 39 points, 12 rebounds, eight assists. So Luca, of course, just kind of going crazy again. And then Monday night, because it was overshadowed by the NFL game and DeMar Hamlin's situation, Donovan Mitchell put up 71 points. And he had 10 assists? Was it 10 assists? 11 assists. 11 assists. 8 rebounds. And 8 rebounds. Yeah. He accounted for 99 points scored and assisted. Yeah. Which you said is the most since Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game. Yeah. Um, and in that game as well, DeMar DeRozan even scored 44, which, I mean, at this point is kind of like nothing. But still, like, that's a lot. Yeah. Um. So Donovan Mitchell putting up 71 who do you think won that trade? Jeez. Um, I, I don't know. That's been crazy. And then uh, Giannis just set his career high. 55 and 10. This past. Yesterday. Last night. Yeah, yeah. last night. Um, And then Anthony Davis, as we talked about, has been out for about a month now for the Lakers. And in the meantime, LeBron has been averaging like 35, 36. He's had a couple 40-point games. Um. I think like what back to back to back or something. I think it's back I think it's too straight. Yeah. yeah, but I at this point he's so much better at the game of basketball than everybody. Yeah, that it's he's almost on like. Yeah, at forty three and then forty seven, yeah. flirting with a triple double each of those nights. Yeah, he he has it like on rookie mode. Like if you're playing two K, he he can get his shot off on anybody. He's made a career out of hitting contested shots. That's why he's been so consistent and why he's probably going to break Kareem's record. Yeah. Hitting contested jumpers in people's faces. And then just when he goes into the lane, nobody can truly stop him. Yeah. He either scores or he gets fouled. He's been hitting a lot of free – his I think like his career high of free throw percentage right now. Mm-hmm. He's been hitting a lot of free throws. Yeah. But, yeah, the game is just – he's on autopilot. Mm-hmm. The, I, when he has to do it, yeah. he still can carry even though – they're still not like an amazing team. Right. They haven't been beating like amazing teams, but he's doing he's being LeBron. Yeah. And I'll I'll always say I hate LeBron with a burning passion. I I don't care for him. But I can never say that I don't respect his game. He's one of those guys that it it sucks, but he's good. Right. There's nothing else you can say. He like it's very soon it's going to be hard for me to, like, go against people baiting LeBron. LeBron is the greatest. Mm-hmm. And I still do it. And the piece, some people look at me like I'm stupid, and they're just like, it's not a conversation. Yeah. It is still a conversation. People, they, they, just, they just don't want to have it because I, he's 6'8", 250, and a yeah. Greek god on a basketball court. Yeah. but yeah. And I do think it is going to eventually come down to LeBron has had such good longevity 
he's been this good for this long. That's he, the argument. I yeah. mean, Jordan played good when he was with the Wizards even. People kind of forget that. He had a good he season. Just, he just didn't win. The problem is now Jordan is m- missing so many stats because of those two retirements that he did. Yeah. Those are going to come back and haunt him for his, you know, GOAT status. Yeah. To to me, he's almost close to impossible to topping because his car- his career was close to perfection. Mm-hmm. From the winning to the stats to the dream team, like his career, yeah, is close to impossible to top to me in terms of overall in, insane greatness. Mm-hmm. But LeBron's longevity and him breaking Kareem's record and him doing this this long, yeah, it's insane. Also, mm-hmm. like it's one A and one B basically. Yeah, but LeB- Jordan's close to perfection is just so much for me that I I still can't put LeBron ahead of him. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna come down to like. Peak Jordan is probably better than peak LeBron, maybe. But the career as a whole, there might be a point where you just can't argue it. Yeah, so their, their careers basically— The only thing you would argue is the championships. Yeah, their careers basically started the same way. Neither of them won for like the first seven, eight years of their career. Mm-hmm. The difference is when, once MJ started, he never stopped winning. Yeah. That's the big difference. Mm-hmm. And yes, he had Hall of Famers around him, but without him— there's no six championships. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, scoring's been going crazy. Oh, the other one we wanted to bring up was Clay Thompson also put up 54. Yeah. They had um, a double overtime game against Atlanta, and they've yeah. been 5-0 and since Steph went down. Yeah. Which is extremely impressive because mm-hmm. they looked out of sorts and I, for a while. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty sure I kind of said that kind of thing, that I would figure that more of their guys would have to step up when Steph would go down. I didn't think they'd, you know, Five and zero, or Von Looney also had fourteen and twenty one that game. Mm-hmm. So, and they've been playing Dante v- Divincenzo, which we yeah. both brought up. That like, where has he been? He was their bigger off season signing. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to allow other guys to step up in this moment. Maybe get Jordan Poole back into his rhythm, and I think they're going to be fine. This that fifty four point game might be exactly what Clay needed to get back on track because he's kind of been up and down lately. Yeah, but yeah, a few bless you. Thank a few you. other teams to note. The Brooklyn Nets. Before we mention the Nets, okay. Dallas Mavericks are on the seven-game win streak. That's what I was going to mention. Yeah, they're 8-2 the, and two in their last 10. With uh, Luka going crazy. But the more impressive one, go ahead. <laughs> Brooklyn Nets, I believe at this point, are like 17 or 18-1 and one in the past month and a half. Right now, they are on a 12-game win streak. Mm-hmm. They're 25-12, and 12, up to second in the East. Just passed Milwaukee a few days ago. Yep. Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are playing like their prime OKC and Cleveland versions. Mm -hmm. It is insane watching how hot and just on point they've been together over the past month and a half. Mm -hmm. And their role players are giving them the best that they got. Yeah. Like TJ Warren has come off an injury playing like himself. Yuta Watanabe is giving them great minutes and shooting the lights out. Seth Curry is doing Seth Curry. And Jacques Vaughn, I think, kind of is jumping into an argument for Coach of the Year mm-hmm. if they keep playing this way throughout the season. Because they looked bad with Steve Nash. Mm-hmm. Ever since they've gotten rid of him, they found something. Yep. And they're just, they've been on an absolute roll with Jacques Vaughn as coach. Yeah. They're playing like they should have been playing from the get go. Yeah. And because they're winning. Ben Simmons is just, like, pushed to the wayside. I haven't heard his name spoken in a minute. I mean, it's been a minute. I'm looking at the other night. He played 19 minutes, had two points, two assists, three rebounds, two shots. Yeah. So it's like it, it, that's kind of what he wants because he can fly under the radar. He can have a good game every once in a while. But they don't, they don't necessarily need him at the moment, um, and that, that probably bodes well for them. Um, There's another stat line that we forgot that I'm trying to find. Uh, Nikola Jokic, 41, 15, and 15. Did we not talk about that? Last week of December against the Suns. I don't think we did. Probably not. But, yeah, he went crazy against the Suns, and Aaron Gordon had one of the best dunks of the year. Yeah. Um, People have been going crazy. Jokic again, though, is just – So Denver is first in the West right now. He's doing some wild things. Um, yeah, your Pelicans. Yeah, you should take a minute to talk about them. 
Well, even though Zion is I was out say, again for Zion's three weeks, about to be out, for but three he weeks. just had a he just had a hell of a run. Yeah, he was. They uh, got them up to third in the West. People were starting to say that he's just out there playing football instead of basketball. But did get D'Angelo Russell out of here? <laughs> it's funny, uh, but yeah, I mean they've been they've been playing really good. CJ McCollum had eleven threes the other night. Forty one points, eleven threes. Yeah, yeah. So that's been great. They're third uh, in the West, and let me see. Like they're kind of doing what they did last year, where like they're sixteen and four at home, and they're seven and ten at uh, on the road. So. They're just super dangerous at home. So if they can secure themselves some home home court advantage in the playoffs, they're going to be really good. Yeah, I, I do think it is so strange. It seems like every time Brandon Ingram is healthy, Zion isn't. Mm. And now Brandon Ingram is coming back again, and Zion is out for three weeks. Yeah. I hope when they play together they can have chemistry. I think they can. Because by the, play, by the time the playoffs start, mm-hmm. they need to be ready to roll Yeah, as a full team. Because mm-hmm. they have the talent, and they're showing they they might be able to do it. Yeah. Even though we've never seen, we haven't seen Zion in the playoffs yet. Yeah. We know what to expect out of the other teams. Well, and we as as we mentioned, Nikola Jokic having a crazy season yet again. He is third in the league in assists per game. He's the greatest big man passer ever. as a big man. Yeah. Um, and while I'm looking at these stats, I do want to mention really quick, and then we'll probably have to move on. Tyrese Halliburton is having himself a season. He is leading the league in assists per game. Isn't it eleven a game? Uh, right now it's ten point one. Okay. It, it may have been eleven at some point. Um, he's he's been in and out of the lineup a little bit here and there lately, but for the most part, like he's been having crazy games. Okay. Twenty points, ten assists, four rebounds for the season. Yeah. Um, looking like a bright young talent for this team. Yeah, and, and man, he, the Pistons had a chance to draft he's, him. He's keeping the Pacers above water, mm-hmm. and I don't know how the. I know the fans are excited seeing this team play because you watch their highlights and they are a very fun. Yeah. Like, really. And they play good basketball with Rick Carlisle as coach. Mm-hmm. So, it's it's really fun to watch. But I wonder how they feel because they're, they're not going to win a playoff series. Yeah. So, they're not, like, really in the middle, but they're also, like, not ready to contend. Mm-hmm. But they have good young guys. They're, they're, in a, they're in a solid position. Right. They're in a very solid position. Yeah, they can make something happen at some point. And that, I think we said it before, that, that's been one of the, like, Best trades for both teams. The Kings are playing well. The Pacers are kind of figuring it out. It's gone really well. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll talk about some more NBA as college football is wrapping up. Um, we got to move on to Week 18 of the NFL picks. It's a big week because it's it's, it's big. a big week. It is big. Um, and I want to get to the Lions when we get there. So um, how was the past week? It was wild. Uh. It was it was wild. So, Malik, you had another really good week. Okay. I'm not going to lie. You got 11 picks correct. All right. On the week. And it it was a it was another rough week for your boy here. I had 7, right? Oh boy. So you are now leading. <laughs> oh. Don't get too excited. Don't get too excited. 140 to 137. Don't get too excited. Um and looking at some of my picks, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I I think I, I remember yeah. the Colts was just one that I just wanted because we needed the Giants to lose. Um, Carolina, I just wanted to see win. I don't know why I picked Washington because we needed Washington to lose. Um, so that one was weird. Houston, I did think was going to be more competitive against <laughs> Jacksonville. That game was a wash. And then the Jets didn't get it done against Seattle like we needed. Okay, I guess it wasn't crazy, and then we never got Buffalo and Cincinnati, which would have been a could have been a difference maker, yeah. um, or at least made it a little closer. So here we are, week eighteen. You have the lead, one forty to one thirty seven. Okay, Th- a three point lead. I'm I'm sticking to my strategy. Okay, what I've been yeah doing. So we got to do this rapid fire so we can talk about the Lions a little bit, which is the last game. Yes. Um, Kansas City at Vegas. Kansas City. Jared I, ho- Stidham. I, ho- I hope Jared Stidham plays well again because. That team and Derek Carr are still dead to me, even yeah. though I, I I guess Derek Carr could look better somewhere else. Yeah. But it's just gone too bad. Yeah. But it's yeah, going to be Chiefs. crazy. Um, that's a Saturday night game. The other Saturday night ca- uh, nightcap, Tennessee at Jacksonville, which will be the AFC South division winner. Whoever wins that game is in the playoffs. Is Josh Dobbs starting again? Yes. Let's go, Jags. Duval. 
I'm so happy for Trevor Lawrence in that the team of young guys. I'm going making the playoffs in their second season. Again. I'm going with Tennessee. Okay. Derrick Henry sat out last week. Maybe he got enough rest. And at this point, unfortunately, I need to get some wins here. Uh, Baltimore at Cincinnati. This still may be up in the air because who knows what's going to happen with that buff that Buffalo and Bengals game. I don't think there's going to be too many schedule changes, but this game will be played at some point. Um, Baltimore at Cincinnati. Baltimore lost to Pittsburgh. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they, did. <laughs> they did. I'm going to go with Cincinnati. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the the Ravens aren't really scaring anybody. Right? Their defense is still good. They're still holding teams to not a lot of points. But, yeah, yeah, I trust Cincinnati to make some plays. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with Cincinnati, too. I don't feel confident enough in Baltimore, even if Lamar Jackson comes back next week. I don't think he's going to. I don't know if Baltimore can really change their position. There's no point in Lamar coming back. Yeah. I don't know if they can really change their playoff position all that much, whereas the Bengals are battling for that one seed. Uh, Tampa Bay at Atlanta. Tampa Bay might sit everybody. Because they have nothing to play for. They yeah. clinched a division last week. Desmond Ritter has has been making small steps going forward. Mm-hmm. Are you on? Is the... it Kyle Trask or Desmond Ritter? What is it Blaine Gabbert? Oh, yeah, you're right. It might be Blaine Gabbert. <laughs> I, I wish it was Kyle Trask versus I don't, Desmond Ritter. I don't even know who it's going to be. That would be my dream. Keep it, it even though Tom Brady says that. he wants to play week 18, I don't know. Give me the Falcons. Okay. Um, I think this is a good enough risk. I will take Tampa Bay. Okay. Um, might be a big Rashad White game. Who knows? Uh, New England at Buffalo. New England needs to win to get a chance to make it in. I don't know what their scenarios are. Yeah, I, I feel like Bill Belichick might draw up something on defense to keep them in the game. He always pulls something out. But uh, I'm taking Buffalo, okay? I'm playing it safe, even though I need to come back. This is one I, I don't feel. Yeah, I'm going to go Buffalo, too. Mac Jones just, something's not right this week. Or this year. Uh, Minnesota at Chicago. You know, before we got the news, I would have thought Chicago had a chance. But Justin Fields is out for this game. It's Nathan Peterman. I cannot pick Nathan Peterman. Minnesota. If Nathan Peterman beats the Vikings. They need to dismiss themselves from the playoffs and just go home. Vikings. Houston at Indianapolis. This is a terrible. If Houston wins this game, they would lose their number one pick. Who would it go to? Who's the who's Chicago. the Chicago? Oh, whoa, whoa, wow. Yeah. I guess will Chicago take a defensive player? I assume. I would think so. Will Anderson. Yeah, Will Anderson. They just gave up wow. Roquan Smith and all that. Huh. Yeah. I'm taking Houston. This could be a big game. I think they win and Houston well, Houston would still end up with the quarterback they want. Yeah, so, most likely. Yeah. I'll I'll just yeah, I think Houston. Okay. I'll go Indy even though I I can't see them winning, but, you know, it wouldn't be surprising if Houston messed up their thing by winning. Uh, Jets at Miami. So, Mike White. He's pretty much screwed up his money. He came back down to earth. Yeah, it was (laughs) weird. He targeted Garrett Wilson 11 times and completed three passes to him. Uh, At this, I'm I'm sorry for Jets fans for the quarterback history they've had. Yeah. Like, Joe Joe Namath, they have to keep going back to Joe Namath. And Robert Sala is now saying that they are going to continue to develop Zach Wilson through hell or high water. I mean, they, what choice do they have? I don't know. Just Yeah. In retrospect, it seems like the kid from Utah going to New York was the worst thing that could have happened. Yeah. But this is where we are. Yep. Mike White is starting. Yep. And it's against most likely Skylar Thompson. Mike White versus Skylar in Miami. And both teams are still <laughs> vying for a playoff spot. I thought New York was eliminated. Uh, this I don't. Past week. I don't believe so. I think there's a very. It's a weird chance. I think. I am taking the Dolphins. Okay. I'm gonna take. That's the, what I'm doing. I'm gonna take the Jets. I think I picked them last week and they also failed. Yeah, I did because I thought their defense would come through and their defense got torched. Um, so it could happen again. But you should get Chris a Zach Wilson jersey for his birthday. Oh man, <laughs> that'd be crazy. I'm sure he'd love it. Carolina at New Orleans. This game is more interesting than it should be. New Orleans still has a chance, technically. They, they're they also a team that needs, like, oh, wait, maybe they did get eliminated. They got eliminated because the Seahawks won, I think. Um, They kept themselves in it because they won against the Eagles. Then it might not but be then they lost in the afternoon, I believe. I'm going to go Saints. I don't think they just, have a chance. Just because. Also, you, you had 
Josh Norman and uh, <laughs> C.J. Henderson. Yeah. And them just getting destroyed. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to go Carolina, even though I'm not super confident because – Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold has been, played a good game, even though in the clutch he didn't come up big. Yeah. But and he's gone to DJ yeah. Moore, which I would assume Marcus Lattimore is probably going to try to shut him down. Yeah. Uh, Cleveland at Pittsburgh. This is an interesting game. Pittsburgh is in the playoff hunt. How? Listen, Cleveland. Deshaun Watson had his best game so far as a Brown. Mm-hmm. That's about it. I'm yep. going Pittsburgh. <laughs> we haven't seen Nick Chubb in weeks. It feels like, but I'm going to go Cleveland because I need to catch up. Chargers at Denver. Chargers. Yeah. Poor Broncos fans. I can, again, I cannot wait to see the Chargers in the playoffs. I'm excited for I, that. I don't think I've seen a fan base have a worse season than what they've had to deal with with this season. Yeah. Although, I don't know if you know, there's a YouTube channel called That's Good Sports. Mm-hmm. Dude named Brandon Perna. He's a Broncos fan, but he does like overall NFL stuff. Mm-hmm. He has a series on YouTube called The Worst Game I've Ever Seen. That's been going on for like twelve weeks now. It's like at the new, 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 new worst game I've seen. <laughs> it's a fantastic series. You should watch it. Okay. Giants at the Eagles. Eagles just cannot secure that number one seed. They needed one Jalen win. Hurts back. Uh, I don't know if they've said yet. Um, I feel like the both teams are secured in the playoffs. I feel like the Giants might try to play and prove something, but they also might sit people. Yeah. Brian Dayball is so fiery. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if he's going to sit everybody. Yeah, I don't know if they can improve their spots. I'm going to Eagles. They get the win. Okay. They get it done. I'm going to go Giants because I think it's close enough if Gardner Minshew plays. If Jalen Hurts plays, well, I might have screwed myself, but oh well. Arizona at San Francisco. We don't, we, yeah, just put, just, just put it down. Gosh, Arizona. Listen, big confidence Brock is keeping it rolling. Mm-hmm. Rams at Seattle. I'm taking the Rams because we need them to win. Just for the podcast, I'm taking the Rams, Thank too. Thank you. <laughs> I'm taking the Rams. Thank you. Bring out the Detroit Rams energy that we saw <laughs> last year, please. Um, if the Rams beat the Seahawks, the Lions have a chance to make the playoffs, but they need the Rams to win. A lot of people have been putting out memes that Matthew Stafford is eligible to return from the IR. <laughs> I don't think that'll happen. Dallas at Washington. We just got word Washington is going to start rookie Sam Howell. I hope Sam plays well, but playing against that defense right now might not be the best for him. Yeah. Even though Gardner Minshew balled out mm-hmm. against them. And he's they, got, they have an inconsistent. I mean, Jahan, Jahan Dotson is good. Their receiving core is good. Yeah. They have weapons. Mm-hmm. So he might be able to do something, but I'm going to take Dallas. Yeah. Does yeah. Dak Prescott throw two more picks? Probably. Let's listen to Road to 20. Let's Probably. keep it going. <laughs> All right. And here we go. Final game of the weekend. Please, Rams win so it's a win and get in. This would be so hype. Detroit at Lambeau taking on the Green Bay Packers. Both Listen, teams. You, you you pick this first. I'm taking the Lions. Even if the Lions are not a win and get in scenario, if Seattle wins, unfortunately, I think the Lions got this, something to prove. This Please is, take Aaron Rodgers out of the playoffs. Use that energy. Jamal Williams revenge game. We can finish above 500. It's a big one. Come on. Lions. That's what I like to hear. I should have taken the Packers just to mess everything <laughs> up. Um, Lions, I can't take the Packers. Got to go Lions. Man, if the Ram again, if the Rams win that game, the Lions have a chance to win against the Packers, get into the last wild card spot for the playoffs. And I think right now, Oh, I think, oh, no, because it flip-flopped because Minnesota won, that the Lions would play San Francisco in the first round, which kind of stinks. Listen. But there's a chance. Mr. Irrelevant, even though we're all friends of Brock, he's Mr. Irrelevant. Yep. They're stacked, though. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Christian is going crazy. Kittles, yeah, everybody's firing on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next week, we'll talk about um, if the Lions lose, maybe we'll do a season recap and kind of talk about everything. Um just because I think there's some some bright spots for the coming uh, season. And uh, if they're in the playoffs, we're just going to go crazy. Um, national championship, we'll review that. Try to get into some more uh, college basketball now that we're getting into conference play. And, of course, we'll try to keep updating you with the NBA as college football will be over. Over. And on to the next. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. Another disappointing end to the Michigan football season.
But they beat Ohio State two years in a row. What do I what do I do, Joe? What do I do with huh? these thoughts? We'll see where Jim Harbaugh goes.